to the needs of the market. This was a culture that fused many different influences. In painting, the Mughal emperors sponsored artists to paint manuscripts depicting their own achievements. Images like these reveal the influence of old Persian art, but their sheer sense of realism has led many to detect the influence of the distant West. These vibrant paintings not only glorified the deeds of the Mughals, but also illustrated the Hindu epic literature which flourished under their rule. The 18th century sees the emergence of strong regional powers. There are particularly groups in southern, western and eastern India who emerge in the 18th century. In western India, we find the Marathas coming up. And this is a group who rebelled against Aurangzeb in the late 17th century, but established a very powerful state based on the city of Pune in western India. And they expanded over quite a large part of India in the course of the 18th century. And they could have, in fact, replaced the Mughals as the chief ruling group in India. The British really start to establish their rule in a serious way in the mid-18th century. Initially, the British were confined to just a few port cities. However, in the course of the 18th century, they managed to gradually expand their power. Firstly, in, in southern India, around Madras. Then, very crucially, in the 1750s, they gain control over Bengal. Then we see a gradual expansion during the course of the 18th century. The British allied with certain rulers against others. And after they had managed to defeat the main enemy, they often made a, an alliance or treaty with that ruler. But it's a long process, stretching over almost 100 years. The Mughal Empire also saw a cultural fusion in the realm of music. The so-called Mughal style dates from the reign of the Emperor Aurangzeb. It is said that the Emperor did not appreciate music, and so his own musicians decided to leave his employment. Their Muslim style now fused with the established Hindu folk music practiced away from the court. The hybrid style of music that resulted is still practiced and appreciated today. Contemporary northern Indian music is a continuing reminder of the fusion of Indian and Islamic traditions that took place under the Mughals. This fertile mixture of old and new also resulted in amazing achievements of architecture, and nowhere more so than at the city of Agra. Here, the Mughal emperor Shah Jahan commissioned the building of a fabulous tomb in memory of his wife who died at the age of just 39. Her name was Mumtaz Mahal, and the monument that her husband constructed was one of the most amazing buildings ever seen on earth. It remains so today, a brilliant combination of the Hindu and Islamic traditions of India, the Taj Mahal. This is the most compelling monument to the power of romantic love. It is said that Shah Jahan and his beloved wife were never parted during their 18 years of marriage. When Mumtaz died, her husband was consumed with grief. But he soon resolved that his wife's body would rest in a fabulous tomb. 22 years later, in 1648, the Taj Mahal was completed. The labor of 20,000 men had been required. The Taj Mahal epitomizes and is the, probably the living embodiment of Mughal achievement in India. The whole conception of the mausolea is quite loaded and it evolves very interestingly in South Asia. In that, this is a monument of love. It's marvelously articulated in terms of it has all the tenets of the Islamic paradisiacal garden, at the head of which you have this great edifice. So again, as you progress into the monument from, from its outer enclosures, which are in red sandstone, the great gateway, uh, and the, the two mosques that are on either side of it, on east and west of it, and then, of course, the main um, rather pearl-like setting of the monument itself, 
which is again sits adorned on magnificent plinth, the great domical chamber, and in four corner minarets, which under normal circumstances would have been bastions adhering to the built form, but in this case have been given their own autonomy and done so very interestingly architecturally. Sadly for Shah Jahan, there was a price to pay for this timeless expression of love. It is said that the Taj Mahal cost 32 million rupees to build. It is also said that such a price was too much even for a Mughal king. According to legend, Shah Jahan's lavish spending led to his overthrow by his son Aurangzeb. The new ruler then imprisoned his father in Agra's Red Fort, a mile to the west of the Taj. For the last eight years of his life, Shah Jahan remained confined. His only consolation was that his cell window looked out onto the monument that remains the greatest reminder of his rule and his love. Everybody reacts to that building because of the supreme elegance, the fantastic colour, the atmosphere about it and the balance of its proportions. You don't need to understand it to realize that it's a very beautiful building. It's the culmination in many ways of more than a century of Mughal architecture in India and especially the mausoleum. I think you could argue that by the time of Shah Jahan, who was deeply interested in architecture, we can see a completely new style. It's a new style, it's a fusion of the different traditions into one distinctive style, which really means that it's no longer important to try and separate out the Hindu elements or the Islamic elements because it's become something on its own, it's become the Mughal style. And I think that the Taj Mahal really is the culmination of that process. It's the greatest monument and it really is the monument in which the two styles are fused together in, to almost perfection. It evolves out of traditions that are very indigenous to South Asian Islam, that of the Mausolea and that of the Pleasure Garden that are articulated in very South Asian terms. But more than that, it tends to become a pan-South Asian Islamic symbol of the time, of the 17th century, which in fact puts it at par with the Safavids in Iran and the Ottomans in Turkey. It tends to take on that great metropolitan kind of iconology of the survival and progress of Islam in India interestingly on indigenous terms. The Taj Mahal has outlived not only its creator but also the Mughal dynasty which began its decline a hundred years later. India's earlier landmarks such as the sophisticated cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Dara survived for 4,000 years hidden beneath the surface. No doubt over time India will yield up more of her lost treasures. Each one with a story to tell.